So, welcome everybody. <laughs> My name is Francesca Moglia. I'm a project leader in the EPIC, European Photonics Industry Consortium. And I'm here today to, to moderate for you uh, the webinar, this EPIC webinar, towards a prototype of antivirus UVC lead based respiratory mask. And uh, just to introduce you a bit in the in the motivation for this webinar, I assume you can imagine that uh, considering our uh, oops, <laughs> considering our um, situation in which we are finding ourselves now of uh, health emergency, basically this uh, idea came to a, a member of ours that has the idea to develop this respiratory mask, and so we introduce him to. Um, a community of our uh, of our knowledge, and uh, basically he will first present his idea as first speaker after me. Then uh, our coordinator of a European project about uh, uh, medical devices photonic space will describe a bit what this uh, European project can do for such ideas, also especially in the future. And then two members of this partnership related to the European project will expose as their own point of view of their own company how in this. Uh, short term and long term uh, can uh, basically their plan to help uh, our first speaker, so Oren, that will speak after me, and how they can support this idea uh, for further development. But before I, I give the word to Oren, let me spend a couple of words about EPIC. So if you um, go to the second slide, so uh, EPIC is a membership-led not-for-profit organization, and our main objectives are to support our members in, for their technological and business development. We want to accompany them to access a new market outside Europe also, and in general provide leading edge uh, technology for system integrators and manufacturers worldwide. Then here in, uh, in bold, you see what we exactly, oops, <laughs> let's go back to our slide, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, so please, the other speakers shouldn't touch the slides, otherwise, I cannot have control on that, thank you. So um, uh, what we offer to our members are um, is written in bold. Uh, we, for example, we let them access market and, and technology reports. We have um, a, we organize technology workshop and B2B roundtables. We coordinate EU funding proposals and, and participate in projects as you will hear about later on about one. We, we, we have other initiatives to support our members and also we are very much present at exhibitions. Um, photonics is, of course, a la large field. So just to give you a, a glimpse in what, in what uh, photonics means, I, I listed you here below some of the subfields in which photonics is, of course, is, a, is, a, is, a, um, is busy with. And for example, there is biophotonics, displays, imaging, lasers, sensors of any kind of articulation. And basically, all of our members have a certain photonic-related technology that they offer to, to the audience. Here, just a, 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 an image of, of what uh, uh, EPIC is. So if you, you probably see very small logos here, and it's just because we are now reaching more than 500 members in EPIC. And so if you want to have a, a better overview, it's better probably if you look at our website this year written below, and there you will have more information about our activities, members, and so on. But just before um, uh, finishing, I give you just a two, two examples of what means the service that EPIC uh, gives to, to their members. And basically, this is an example of a market report, for example, just a, just a, a, a graph of it of um, ultra-fast lasers technology in global markets. And this is just to show you, this is one of the market reports we have um, for our members, but we have a group, group, different groups of market reports for different subfields of, of photonics so that every uh, member from different fields can can, have, can profit from, from them, from, from our library, let's say. But what we are very proud of is usually uh, what we can do for our members uh, on a personal level. So we organize typically uh, technology meetings where 50 to 70 people, uh, one person per company or with a technological background and also decision level meet, uh, usually hosted by one of our, of our members. And we meet for two half days talking about a specific uh, uh, topic inside of photonics. And all the attendees there and, and are usually members and non-members, and they basically represent the full value chain for this specific topic. Now that, as, as I mentioned in advance, um, we, we cannot meet, for at least hopefully for a short time, not anymore uh, in, in a single place to avoid the spread of this virus. 
we try to expand our, our portfolio of, of uh, also initiatives that can be done online so that we can still uh, network together and also um, promote uh, collaborations among our members and also external partners. And so as you see here, the, the uh, webinars, for example, like this one and the one that we have tomorrow on biosensors for viral detections is something that we have already in our normal portfolio of, uh, of uh, events. But the, starting from the second one in this list, you will see that we have now soon, starting from 1st of April to beginning of May, 15 online technology meetings. And basically, there will be a, a reduced version of what we have usually in person, but they will, we will address in this one and a half, two hours time, every topic that is written here on a single, in every different day. And we will have roughly 10 of our members, mostly and some invited external uh, members talking, so participants talking about these specific uh, topics in order to, as I said, um, support collaborations among them. Then, if uh, in the second slide, Can anybody hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Still speaking. Okay, I cannot hear anything about Francisca anymore. Yeah, same to me. Can somebody from the audience hear us?
Okay, I, so it sounds like yeah. somebody can hear us. <laughs> Sorry about that. I think, is there any way, um, is Oren there? We need to sort of carry on. Um, I can send I can send a message out to the audience. Um, but... I needed to log in again to get connection open. Okay. Right. Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, we're experiencing some technical issues at the moment. Um, we're working hard to try and fix this. Uh, sorry, I, we, we've lost connection of Francesca. Um, we'll just bear with us and we'll try and get up and running as soon as possible. Thanks. Right now, I'm here. So, okay. <laughs> okay. Shall we try and reset and go? Okay, all right. Back over to you, Francesca. Yeah, thank you. Sorry for, for the problem. I don't know when I was interrupted, so if someone can brief me on that, um, if I finish my last slide, I'm not sure about this. So I, I guess we can we can go on with the, with the slides of Oren so that we can... Uh, listen to actually the idea that uh, he wants to propose to to our community. So please, Oren, you can start. Oren, whoops. Or, Oren isn't, I think we need to move on to, we've lost Oren, I'm afraid. Okay, so let's let's say that uh, we can start, we can move to UC's talk. In the meanwhile, we can reset uh, Oren's uh, presence here online. So you see, maybe you can uh, start presenting MedFab first. That is still uh, a, a, a good a good point to start with, and then we can see if we can catch on with Oren. Please, you see, go on with the uh, your slides. Uh, uh, okay, uh, thank you. Uh, so I, I'm uh, Jussi Hiltunen, uh, uh, acting as a research professor at the VTT uh, Technical Research Center of uh, Finland. And uh, I'm very honored then to coordinate this uh, European Union funded initiative to uh, establish a photonics pilot line for uh, medical uh, diagnostics. And this is a very uh, a recent uh, activity and uh, I can say that uh, this is not yet uh, operational. We are this is a project to establish uh, this uh, pilot line, and uh, uh, so uh, we are uh, not directly uh, contributing this uh, 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 orange case corona shield mask. But uh, this is really uh, falls in the uh, domain that uh, in the future we we are uh, interested uh, in contributing this kind of uh, technology uh, development. Uh, the main uh, driver uh, to establish uh, MedFab is then uh, to help companies and um, to speed up uh, medical device uh, development. Uh, and a little bit background for this, uh, so that uh, the, it has been uh, identified that uh, delays in product development uh, are substantially caused by the heterogeneous nature of uh, photonics devices and uh, then a fragmented offering uh, of the companies. 
Uh, secondly, this uh, regulatory compliance is highly demanding, particularly for SMEs uh, launching the first product uh, to market. And uh, really the purpose of a uh, MedFi uh, uh, pilot line uh, is to accelerate the commercialization of uh, diagnostic devices and instruments uh, uh, based on uh, uh, photonics and therefore uh, uh, to reduce R&D uh, costs. So uh, MedFab uh, is not uh, the only uh, pilot line. There are already a couple of uh, uh, already running ones. Uh, few... The problem is uh, I need to have uh, uh, Okay, uh, and a couple of those are running. But the concept uh, that uh, differentiates uh, MedFab from other pilot lines uh, and available uh, uh, other services uh, rely on a, a low barrier open access model on the uh, high impact medical application domain and uh, uh, accelerated uh, uh, production. And we are a consortium of uh, 18 partners and depending on the customer needs and the required the technology readiness level. The work is distributed with, uh, between ISO 13485 certified companies and research and technology uh, organizations. The orders for the pilot line production uh, are made in a centralized manner and channeled uh, to the manufacturer with the best implementation uh, capability. And uh, the model uh, will be then supported uh, uh, by modularized uh, fabrication and established uh, production uh, libraries. In this uh, establishment uh, phase, uh, we have a technology validation uh, program uh, uh, inbuilt inside uh, MedFab. Uh, the technology validation of uh, pilot uh, production life focuses on three uh, application areas with different uh, uh, user uh, profiles covering uh, hospital use, uh, home care devices, and uh, equipment for molecular diagnostics. In a uh, hospital environment, uh, uh, the solutions assist doctors by giving them real-time information how the treatment uh, is uh, progressing. The equipment uh, for home diagnostics, on the other hand, can be used for monitoring how a patient is recovering from an operation. Uh, or a fit of illness and for getting a wider picture of the situation than currently uh, possible. Uh, uh, third case, this uh, molecular diagnostic uh, is about establishing a clinical picture or diagnosing an infection based on, for example, serum, uh, saliva or urine uh, sample. Um, then, uh, shortly about the uh, technologies that uh, we have in, in uh, within MedFab. So uh, typically diagnostic devices consist of uh, numerous uh, photonic and non-photonic components uh, that need to be combined uh, for the required functionality. Uh, MedFab will offer uh, first uh, photonics module integration, a second fiber optic patty packaging and third, uh, disposable uh, uh, optofluidic uh, diagnostics uh, uh, with aim to reach a level where it is ready for small to medium scale production and uh, later on uh, scalable to commercial production. As an example, in uh, one uh, potential uh, fiber optic system, the technologies uh, 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 can include a comb combination of fib fiber handling, electronic, hermetic sealing, just an example to be integrated to a device. In another potential case, uh, Met MedFab can help to miniaturize several electrical and uh, optical uh, functionalities uh, on the wearables, such as uh, PPG or SpO2 detection. And in addition, we also uh, uh, offer uh, microfluidic technologies and their integration with optofluidic platforms. Uh, typically, this microfluidics is used for liquid sample handling and uh, 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 photonics are uh, uh, 
so that they are integrated. And on top of that, uh, usually in those kind of systems, uh, we need then also an external uh, reader unit for the signal uh, acquisition. This is all already a, a, a quite broad uh, uh, list of uh, technologies. And obviously, we can't do everything. And uh, then it's in everyone's, everyone's interest that we also network with uh, other technologies, uh, 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 including other uh, EU-funded uh, pilot lines. So um, as MedFab uh, Consortium comprises both a research organization uh, organizations and ISO uh, 13485 certified companies. Uh, uh, we can offer a ra rather extensive list uh, uh, of technologies in various uh, categories. Um, therefore, uh, when communicating with the customers, uh, for us it is important to understand their needs and the phase where a MedFab can help. And especially whether it is more in the development phase or in the upscaling phase. And for example, that if the customer is in the concepting phase, we have capabilities for photonics design, comprising, for example, rigorous or ray tracing methods that are then uh, connected to understanding of fabrication methods. Those fabrication methods can uh, be then uh, standard one, standardized ones, or alternatively, we can uh, we have uh, access then to customize existing uh, fabrication uh, methods. The other uh, foreseen scenario, uh, more in the uh, upscaling phase, is. Uh, is that the concept is uh, kind of freezed when MedFab can help make uh, the designs for manufacture and then per perform the uh, uh, pilot production. And uh, one important part of the offering uh, and quality system is then our capabilities to <clears throat> characterize each fabrication step and to some extent also evaluate uh, the performance of the devices. Um, so, MedFab partners have the, a, a combination of complementary infrastructure and uh, interdisciplinary uh, uh, expertise uh, addressing the uh, 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 fairly complete supply chain. And uh, it is then in the core of the operation that for the customers, uh, we can uh, offer a clear and uh, easy to understand interface. And uh, here the plan uh, is that the, the orders for the pilot production line are made in a centralized manner and channeled Especially to the manufacturer with the best implementation uh, capability. And uh, uh, this uh, organ is called a uh, front office, where uh, uh, that handles then uh, customer consulting, uh, prepares required uh, documents, and then uh, evaluates the best realization change uh, in, in terms of quality and uh, uh, service time. Um, and then, uh, 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 inside a uh, MedFab uh, project, uh, uh, we, we have a um, uh, uh, inbuilt validation uh, program. And uh, this is something that uh, I, I would like to uh, disseminate uh, as well uh, here. And uh, this is uh, made to uh, test ourselves and prove that uh, how we can serve uh, uh, customers. So uh, you can see here uh, a time span. Uh, so we have a uh, four years time to uh, establish uh, uh, MedFab uh, to be an operational pilot line. And uh, uh, in the mid of next year, then we will launch open call for, for the uh, customers. So then these are the, uh, the first opportunity for the external uh, 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 companies then uh, to <clears throat> Uh, uh, access uh, MedFab services so that uh, MedFab uh, as an uh, initiative uh, uh, produces uh, manufacturing uh, 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 services. And um, uh, the idea here is that uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we get customer uh, 
uh, orders from the customers. Then we channel the fabrication to partners, deliver uh, then uh, uh, the, these uh, uh, pilot uh, productions. And then we are very pleased then to hear feedback that uh, how we are uh, 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 operating. And uh, so uh, please uh, keep uh, eyes open so we will uh, definitely disseminate that uh, about these uh, open uh, calls um, and then uh, uh, to a current uh, status so uh, metfab uh, 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 as a project was started very recently in in january so uh, we are yet uh, too early to operate in a centralized um, manner but like in in this case we are very willing to learn uh, uh, that how uh, uh, we can help companies and uh, how we can uh, network uh, uh, with uh, uh, other uh, stakeholders and then uh, obviously uh, learn uh, uh, about the needs by the uh, customers and this is then a very, very important information when aiming at a sustainable uh, uh, pilot line. Um, here you can see uh, the, the partners of MedFab Consortium. Uh, uh, we have uh, here uh, five uh, research and technology organizations. Uh, their role is to develop new fabrication techniques and support companies, is, uh, uh, especially in research and development phase. Uh, the other group is formed by the companies with uh, ISO uh, 13 5 certificate that enables this industrial level control for the uh, fabrication that is very relevant in medical domain. domain. Uh, five companies evaluate the quality of our technologies in, in their uh, applications. And then to support technology development activities, we have then additional partners for uh, clinical relevance analysis, project management, and last but not least uh, for outreach and thanks, thanks to uh, uh, EPIC. So uh, we are very happy to provide further uh, information. Please follow up, uh, follow, uh, follow us in LinkedIn or Twitter, and uh, please visit our web page that it will be launched very shortly. And you can see also email address uh, 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 where you can uh, reach uh, us. And uh, because uh, this came, uh, uh, this case came uh, 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 so with. Uh, so urgently. So as MedFab Consortium, we were not uh, able uh, to react. And that was the reason that uh, we, we passed uh, uh, the information then to uh, MedFab partners. And then we allowed the partners then to uh, 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 progress and uh, communicate uh, 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 with, uh, in this uh, Corona seal mask uh, as they see, see best. So uh, thank you for Tension and uh, Francesca, maybe you can then uh, continue. Exactly. Thank you, Yusi, for presenting MedFab to us. We have still actually a question coming from the audience. Um, can you a bit more specify at which level of readiness should be the ideas that are presented in the open call? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So uh, uh, this uh, uh, deep, uh, depends uh, obviously. Um, uh, on the uh, case, uh, uh, be, uh, we have uh, uh, companies uh, on board and uh, uh, basic, uh, that are doing real uh, production. So uh, uh, companies, they, they can do up to TRL9, that is uh, actual production, but the MedFab as a consortium uh, 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 goes for TRL8, so a kind of uh, uh, for uh, a clinical study. So this is kind of top. But then uh, it, it really depends that uh, if uh, 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 kind of non-standardized uh, fabrication methods are uh, used, uh, then uh, we might need to uh, resort to a lower level. But uh, capabilities uh, in principle can, can go quite high. OK, yeah, thank you, Yusi, for this. Uh, uh, precising this in the case, as you showed, there is a slide that will be our our website where you can 
everybody can check also uh, by next year how is the, the the guidelines for this application. So now, I guess, I apologize if uh, our <laughs> main speaker unfortunately couldn't speak and we had also some issues before, but now I see Oren is there. So Oren, yeah, I'm good. Yes, I'm very good. <laughs> Welcome back. So now the floor is yours and yeah. go with your fantastic idea. Thank you. Uh, hoping that uh, we'll pass it in a, like, in a nice uh, manner. Uh, what I'm talk going to talk to, uh, with you guys is uh, like the Corona uh, shield mask and uh, a, a small introduction. I'm like the founder of Duma Optronics and I'm an inventor. And uh, Duma, in uh, Duma Optronics uh, is uh, doing uh, photonic instrumentation for lasers and for uh, Electronic autocollimator and a lot of a lot, a lot of photonic instrumentation. Uh, I do apologize, uh, but uh, because we want to move as fast as possible, I made this uh, presentation like uh, in an engineering type of presentation. We are going to talk about bits and pieces. So, uh, and I hope, uh, please, whenever you have a question. I would like you to bear in and tell me what, what's the question we, we can discuss. And so now we'll go to the introduction. Uh, the, the, this project I'm trying to do in a different company, not uh, like the one that I founded. It's called OL Innovation, which we act there as the factor incubator for photonics related uh, technologies. We are operating in this mode for many years. Five of six companies came out of this type uh, of uh, operation. Uh, and it's, uh, most of the patents that uh, we base our technology on is, are my patent. So like I was the inventor there. I do not own the patents, not all of them, but uh, I was uh, like uh, the inventor of uh, these technologies. And uh, I think there is a lot of, of talking of how to get, uh, like how to solve the, the, this coronavirus uh, outbreak. Uh, one of the areas that was neglected was to find like photonics-based solutions. And that's exactly like the photonics uh, that we, uh, that I would like to present. and. Uh, uh, in a short while, I'll show you the we, the, like the team. Uh, that's the team is like an ad hoc team. I put them together like uh, like very recently. Apart from Galid, that she's working with me for the last two years, uh, the other guys are in this area quite newcomers. Uh, we have Joram Edelstein, which is very good in uh, like uh, is uh, like a financing person that will help if financing issue will arise. We have Snir Gadasi, that is a young uh, person, very innovative and initiative, and uh, he will help us as much as he can. We have Dr. Galit Anke Eliau, she's a biologist. Noam. He's a, a, a mechanical, optomechanical engineer with a lot of experience. And me, myself, I'm at this stage, I'm leading the team. Uh, uh, our technology, we want to base it on like a self protection. That's, uh, that's why we call it Corona Shield. Uh, I do not, uh, uh, like I'm not a, a very big uh, support of this uh, mask, uh, the, those type of masks. I think that uh, they do not 
help too much, and I think that maybe they create a, a problem by their own. And uh, we need to have a, a solution that, uh, to some extent, will provide something like uh, self-isolation. So the, the person wearing this type of mask is somehow isolated from the environment, the, the mask that I'm going to, pro uh, to propose, in one hand. Uh, but on the other hand, he could be mobile without being uh, uh, without having like uh, this type of uh, danger of infecting other people and for that we'd like to implement uh, like photonics technologies here we have we see like a typical uh, mask that we propose uh, uh, like the mask, uh, uh, we we intend to make it the mask itself. We intend to intend to make it from uh, uh, like medical silicon or something like that, and uh, it it will be uh, smooth, not porous surface, not to allow. Sorry, sorry, not to allow uh, for. Uh, for viruses to build up on the external surface of the mask, and it will have a pipe or a hose for inhalation and exhaling the air. The basic idea is to have this pipe to, to be, and now I'm showing like a cross section of this, uh, of the part of this pipe. It's uh, based on a uh, light guide, here is empty, the air comes in from this direction. Here we have one or many LEDs, uh, UVC LEDs. The light bounces back and forth in the, back, in, in the light guide, and the air coming to the user passes through this uh, light guide. Uh, and uh, according to my calculation, and here is a, a big E, I, I, I'm not so sure that the calculations are totally right, this will sterilize or at least disinfect the air inhaled by user. Excelled air will go the same way and will be disinfected as well. Uh, so, uh, Actually, what we get by having that, we get uh, to, uh, to a level that the user or the wearer is inhaling and exhaling perfectly disinfected air. It's simple to make, but it's, it's going to be very difficult to test. And here, uh, the, like, Every person that is hearing, especially the, the MedFab, if you can help us in testing how good this mask is going to be, that it's a very important thing. Okay, so what we'll have, what what are the subcomponents that we'll have in this pipe or light guide? Uh, we'll have UVC radiation. We'll have also a, a area where all incoming air will pass through a filter and will be, the air itself will be heated. We want to bring it to about 100 degrees. And we'll have like an active carbon filter to, to remove ozone created by the UV, but the ozone itself it's good also for disinfection. So those are the three, that's like the input side. We have like this heated wire mesh. Air goes, uh, this could be wire mesh or uh, uh, metal, uh, foam metal. Air will be thrown into the light guide. and will travel upwards towards uh, the user's mouse. That's the user mouse eye. 
and this is the LED. This LED could be mounted like this, or we can have a string of smaller LEDs going all along the pipe. To remove the ozone created by uh, the UV uh, and to provide an additional filter, we'll have like a small carbon filter cab and then the, the air will go to the user mouth. Uh, it's, uh, I believe it could be achieved very fast. This technology could be implemented very fast. Uh, and if successful, it's actually a game changer. Because in this case, if this mask is very good and successful, then you don't need to isolate areas. It's good enough that you isolate the person and we can also give this person mobility. And uh, this, uh, because the air is disinfected on input and an output, so he can uh, wander around, which that can change like the whole uh, strategy for fighting the coronavirus. Uh, I hinted that passive masks, uh, to my opinion, are actually a problem and not a solution. I, I will say, I will tell why. Uh, the Chinese, they found out, out that those viruses like uh, surfaces that are uneven, that uh, have uh, like a lot of uh, uh, uneven places, and actually they cling to those uh, surfaces as well. As assuming like a regular mask, it's very good, uh, it, it has very small holes, and it, it will be like, it will prevent from uh, viruses to go to the user uh, mouse, but, Amazing enough, it's probably going to keep all those viruses in a, in a type of petri, uh, uh, on a, pe a petri dish, because uh, it's going to be, they are going to be like in a very porous area. It's, they are going to be in a humid area because like uh, breathing will provide the humidity and uh, in this case, because there are so many and it's very difficult to get rid of them, actually they preserve the, the, the germs on their outer surfaces. So if somebody will touch the outer surface, then he can get it. And also it creates a problem to get rid of those masks because if you don't like uh, burn them or something like that, then they uh, they become a part of the problem and not a part of the solution. In our mask, being active, we actually constantly disinfect the mask, so it could be used many time, times, and uh, I think, and that's the big if, if it's as good as I think, as according to my initial calculation, then it's actually a very large game changer. Uh, one of the things that it's not like very easy to understand is, uh, is the price of this UVC LEDs. I found price for such LEDs with the amount of uh, uh, F energy required in China for about uh, 10 to $15 in quantities of one. And uh, there is uh, an Ichia, with, which is a uh, well-known Japanese company do, doing UVC LED. And uh, over there, it's about 10 times as much, but I mentioned it's not in mass production, it's one by one in mass production. If people know what, uh, like uh, the history of uh, lasers and laser diodes, they were 
they were very, very expensive when it began. But then once mass production was introduced, laser diodes today with very high powers you can buy for, for a few cents. So uh, the same it's probably going to happen if uh, there will be a large demand of UVC LED. The nice thing is the technology of UVC LED, uh, LEDs is, we have it. There are several companies that make it. It took a long time, but we are now in the uh, in a period that we know how. To, <coughs> sorry, that we know how to make UVC LEDs, and that's uh, encouraging. But I, because I don't believe it's going to be very expensive, the way the tube is built, it's opaque from the outside, so no UVC light will be uh, seen by uh, by people everything is within the pipe itself so there's no danger uh, regarding the, to have like exposure to uv according to the latest knowledge and know-how but there's nothing around there that ex exactly explain what we are going to do. So we uh, we uh, try to understand based on the, the common knowledge what's the procedure the, uh, that is going around. So UVC radiation, what it does, it, uh, it will uh, <coughs> damage the 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 virus genome and by doing that the virus cannot uh, produce that it cannot uh, divide itself and produce more viruses so actually it's meaning killing the virus and uh, what we found out that 254 in this region, it's not just 254, but this is the maximum, but uh, from uh, up to 290 and 300 nanometer radiation, it's still very effective against the coronavirus. Uh, <clears throat> and we found some numbers, but in this area, we'll, uh, and that's an area that uh, people can help us, we'll probably need to make our own testing equipment and uh, from this equipment to actually come to the right number that will destroy the, uh, the viruses within a cycle of breathing, which is around three to four seconds. A person breathes uh, 15 times per uh, per minute. If somebody has some question in this stage, please, otherwise we'll, I'll continue. Uh, so, um, you hear me? Warren. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. Just uh, there yeah. are questions, um, there are comments of people asking how much it is, but there are not yet comments saying against it or alternatives. So let's leave okay. now a bit of time for the people to think All about right. it. Maybe someone sketches something, Please. and then you can go on and see. There are a lot of questions I already, so let's keep going. So, okay. <laughs> I, uh, how, how long do I have more? How much time? No, a few minutes. I would, I would uh, a bit, uh, okay. hurry up, yeah, please. <laughs> Thank I, I you. Would. So uh, what we came out that in order to satisfy like uh, whatever we need, uh, 80 milliwatts UVC uh, uh, will, uh, will be uh, adequate and the cross-section of the pipe to be used will be probably 2.25 square centimeter, which is 
a little bit more than 1.5 centimeter in diameter. And uh, the, the dosage, which is actually the time of breathing and the UV intensity, in this case will be enough to destroy uh, the, the virus. And uh, what is nice, the destruction will be on inhaling and exhaling. So actually uh, isolating the respiratory system from the environment. And uh, another thing which is very nice, assuming that we will not have 80 milliwatts. So we'll put another uh, UVC and we'll have uh, 150 milliwatts. So it's easily scalable to reach to the level that we need. Uh, as for power needed, according to our calculation, uh, like a regular uh, data bank with 25,000 uh, uh, milliwatts, 25,000 milliwatts hour would be good enough for a full day activation of the mask. So actually, uh, the, there's no real problem here. There is another option that, by the by, uh, the way of example I demonstrated here, is to have like a, a little bit more uh, sophisticated type of uh, disinfection system that it's based on compressing. Let's say that's uh, and for understanding, I show here a cylinder that uh, it's full of air. If I want to disinfect this cylinder, then I need to have on its perimeter many, many, many UVC LEDs. But if I, com I compress this air into a small chamber, then I need only a fraction of the UVC layer, and I can expose the compressed air, and then let the compressed air out, uh, and it's disinfected already. So that's another option a little bit more complicated, but uh, it, it shows the potential to be able to, to save a lot of uh, UVC LEDs. Uh, although I, I wrote the target market, uh, uh, I'm looking at that more as like uh, not a real marketing, but more a way to help to overcome this uh, crisis. Uh, so the, the first people to use it will be hospital and clinics, because they are like in the front line, and I, I do believe they do not have enough protection with the, with the protection that I see, in, uh, see it in our hospitals and worldwide hospitals. So those will be the first people that will need this assistance. Then we'll need it to, in government services, people that have a lot of face-to-face uh, uh, -face meeting with uh, the population and the military pol police. Those will be the first people to be involved in using this new technology. And then... Uh, as we are giving up for mass production, then we can offer it for customers that are in quarantine, but they need their mobility, so that, that will uh, let them have the mobility without being in quarantine, quarantine if we'll be successful. So th those will be the target market. The thing is that uh, time is of the essence. Uh, so. Here, I, I, like, whatever help we can get, so far I'm financing it by myself, but whatever can, uh, help we can get in order to, uh, to, make, to, to be able to bring it to the markets as soon as possible, it will be very welcome. And uh, 
I, uh, this is uh, like I would like to to use this time to say uh, thank you to the Epic people. They responded immediately and they were very fast. So we need to learn for the from Epic people how to do things like out of the box as, and as fast as possible. So as I said, I'm looking for, the, for collaboration and I'm willing, even if uh, maybe it's a very good idea, I don't, I'm not very sure right now, I'm willing to let whoever can help to use this uh, technology and to offer it as fast as possible to the market. Ourselves, we do not have the capability to do mass production, but I believe in the EPIC organization, people will be uh, capable of doing mass production. So we want to bring, to make like very clear what's our goal. We want to bring the technology as rapid as possible I would say within months, but I don't know if, if it's possible to the market and to to be able to to have a, the necessary needed impact. Here uh, you have like our uh, point of contact where you can contact us. And uh, I'll definitely be in touch with uh, the necessary persons. And uh, I understand that ScreenTech offered to help us and they'll definitely use their offer. And uh, we'll try to do it as fast as possible. I think more or less, I explained the technology. Actually, from the engineering point of view, the technology is quite simple to implement. Uh, the next step that I do not have any experience is that it's how to to find the the virology impact of this mask and how to test it. And that will be like a very important uh, help that we can get from uh, one of the epic epic partners. Uh, Francesca, I think um, I'm yes. willing. I'm willing to answer questions if there are. If not, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you, Oren, for your talk. Questions you. are so many that uh, I barely <laughs> swim in them. <laughs> so oh, okay. uh, let's say uh, there is maybe we pick up one because some questions I assume were answered during your talk. Um, uh, one is, for example, about the humidity level. How, if you thought about how to deal with this? Uh, the, yes, uh, like uh, the, depends which type of mask we are going to use. But uh, if we somehow are capable of decoupling between inhaling and exhaling, then uh, uh, humidity is not a problem because humidity is created only when exhaling. So we need on exhaling to, to use a little bit different uh, uh, like pass of the air. And uh, also we played around with full masks, full face masks as well, that give protection to the eyes as well. We have like... Uh, uh, an initial design for that as well. Okay, this is already another question you ask. That's exactly what also was coming because you showed only now nose and mouth, but that's a good point. Um, then we also have other uh, questions about the power consumption, but maybe we keep them for later because I guess our other speakers have maybe some comments on this and also on the power system. Someone talks about Exxheimer, uh, Exxheimer sources, Exxheimer lamps, I assume that a diode would be, or a UV, so a LED would, of course, be more compact. What do you think? So, yes, yes. The, that, that's um, why that's why we went for for LED. LED is very compact. It's relatively cheap, and uh, it does it does the job. 
like UV lasers uh, are very, very expensive within the tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars. It, it, they are not like adequate to be used here. But maybe in okay. some special equipment, I don't know. But like for mass production, LED will be the answer. Okay. Yeah, good. There are really many questions, also suggestion in using a system called APSC uh, mask that could be helpful. There are other suggestions, but then we go now on with the next speaker so that we can uh, then have in the final discussion a bit more a general talk. So good. Thank you, Aaron, again. <laughs> thank you, my pleasure. Yeah. And so I give the word now to, to Miko. So Miko, if you want to start with your talk, then we listen to what your proposal is. Thank you. Okay, hello everybody. My name is Mikko Pakkolanvaara, and I'm the CTO of company ScreenTech. I hope you can hear me. So I will go a little bit through about our company and then about the solutions, what we could have for this uh, topic Oren uh, presented, and also something we have uh, done recently regarding the situation with the coronavirus. So Screen Deck oh, is a manufacturing company. We are doing contract manufacturing, and we are owned by Screen Deck Invest Oil, and uh, that is owned by Nordic Option Oil, a company of with 32 employees, turnover of 2.1 million. And uh, the main thing what we do, or how we call it is uh, printed electronics, how we define the things what we are doing at, at our end. We are ICO 13485 and 9001 certified. And uh, apart from uh, contract manufacturing, we also do lots of development work and uh, research on by our own and together with our public partners, which are listed on this slide. My service areas, what we are doing, are medical electrodes and devices, and then durable user interfaces. And then among these two, we do also lots of consultation and productization when we have customers who want to do something on these fields. On medical devices and uh, hybrid sensors, we do lots of different kind of uh, uh, electrodes. So we do electrodes for ECG, EMG, EEG measurements, and also we combine uh, traditional electronics, electronics, so surface mounted components together with printed electronics, generating that way hybrid sensors where we can have, have both printed and non-printed electronics combined together. What we do, we do the manufacturing services as a contract manufacturer. So, so far, or actually I should say, since last week, we did not have any of our own product, but uh, all products what we produce are designed by our customers or designed together uh, with us and our customers. What we, we, we offer, we offer fast prototyping services for different kind of uh, applications. We do zero series, so then we can make a little bit larger amount to find out that if that uh, product what has been developed on a prototype uh, uh, can be used in uh, the real cases and also make some market validations and process validations on our production. And then we can in the end also do mass manufacturing. So depending of course of the product size, we can do millions of pieces per year and even more. We have a uh, very wide know-how of a different kind of materials, what can be used on uh, the printed electronics or on electronics. Uh, we have design know-how, so some, in some cases we get just a paper from our, our customer who has drawn with the pen something that they would like to have, something like this, and then we generate product out of that. We have engineering know-how, so we can do the documentations needed for, for the for the product, as well as uh, 3D models and equipment modifications for our process equipments if needed, so that we can do the processes for the customer product. 
And also we can up, have application know-how, especially for medical electrodes, user interfaces and sensors. Yeah, in-house processes, we have uh, some which are the main things and then some which are not listed here. So flatbed screen printing is where, where we base most of our products. So usually all of our products have something that has uh, been screen printed at some point. So we print both graphical inks and also functional inks, including conductive and isolative inks. So for, for conductive inks, uh, it can be carbon, copper, silver, usually we use silver. Then, then we have uh, heat and UV curing for the ink. So some of the inks need to be heat cured, some UV cured. Lamination, so we can laminate the materials what we have. Uh, so that uh, we can put a protective layer or we can put a, a layer to carry some other layer which is a little bit more fragile. Then we have mechanical cutting so we can cut out the edges, we can cut holes, we can do shapes that are needed for, for the product. We have also leisure cutting and uh, the, all the above mentioned processes we have both in sheet and roll to roll processes so we can do the prototypes in sheet and when this, the numbers or the volumes of the product go in higher volumes then we switch to roll to roll processes where we can increase the outcome a lot. For the laser cutting we currently have only sheet process, the roll to roll uh, laser is coming, actually I should be now testing it in China, but because of the corona situation, we have postponed the visit for some months. So it will come later this year. It might be that it will not hit the first half of this year, but uh, later this year. Then we have a uh, dispensing. So we can dispense different kind of liquids for some volumes. So there are some limitations, not too small volumes. So these are mainly used for our electrodes where we use hydrogel which conducts the printed electrode to the skin. So the material between skin and the printed silver is uh, called hydrogel and that we can dispense either manual or with automated device. And then uh, mechanical parts uh, we can uh, design and generate with 3D printing uh, for prototyping and uh, little volume cells as well. And then one main, one important part of our production is assembly. So all of our all of our products, what we have uh, delivered, they uh, they have some sort of uh, assembly process included. So it can be electrical components, mechanical parts, or some sort of final product assembly where we we add, add something and put them together. And then also we do testing, and we do also have a clean room, so where where we need to have uh, uh, a little bit more clean environment for the pro product, then we do it in our clean room. And uh, our philosophy is that uh, we do this, this kind of must customization. So when we start with the, with the customer, their product as a prototyping, we plan it always so that we can scale it up easily using our processes also in the mass scale. So then it's possible to use the uh, the processes I listed in the previous slide, so that uh, we first use the seed base processes and make the prototypes and the zero series, so a little bit higher volumes, and then we move to the mass manufacturing by using the roll to roll equipment where the volumes uh, come much higher. And then we have actually here one case I would like to introduce, so. Which, would, which will show the uh, path from prototype to mass production. So first we have an idea to manufacture different safety equipment to protect healthcare personnel. So this is something that has happened very recently. Uh, when we had, after we had this idea, we contacted local authorities and companies to find the need and volumes. First run prototypes we made using in-house materials and processes to test that uh, what could be done using what we already have in-house and to find out that if if uh, some of the material we have house could be used in later or if we could the idea that okay we should have this material but a little bit other twist that it would work for for this 
Uh, then we did second round prototypes according to the instructions we got from the from the potential customers. We did some uh, material and two orders to manufacture the zero round with quantity of 1,000 pieces around. Then um, we delivered uh, the second round prototypes to the potential customer. And then we made the third round of prototypes according to feedback from potential customers, made the process time calculations and uh, sent the quotations to potential customers. And actually, after sending the uh, quotations, it took five minutes after we got the first order. And then we did the further material orders for larger quantities, and we will set up the manufacturing documents and processes and start production with the zero series. And this actually happened during the past, let's say, 150 hours. So we started last Saturday morning with an idea, contacted the local authorities about if they would have a need for any safety equipment uh, because of the corona case. And uh, now we have had lots of discussions with uh, local potential customers in Finland. And we have already made uh, three prototypes. You can see the pictures there. And uh, actually, the situation now is that uh, we, we have already orders for something like 35,000 pieces just in five days. And this is just to show, okay, the time is exceptional and the product is exceptional for us as well. But that how fast we are used to react for different kind of ideas and how we can get it get it forward. Uh, then, thanks, Oren, for your presentation. I uh, made here one slide regarding uh, the idea on, on this uh, webinar about preventing corona with UVC masks. So I have here this kind of one scuba diving mask or something, something what, what whatever it is in English. Um, so. What, what we have to offer for this case is that we, we, we can do the design of the circuit with the preferred LEDs, switch and battery. We can manufacture the flexible circuit board, which, which can then be in, installed to the device. We can assemble the UVC LEDs to flexible circuit board. We can select the suitable adhesive to adhere the circuit to the mask. We can assemble the LED circuit to the mask. We can connect the battery source to the LED circuit and uh, do the functional testing on this one. And then we can also pack the parts to individual packs, pack those packs to carbon box and ship the fo box forward. So this is uh, very typical what, what, what we do in every everyday work that we, we do contract manufacturing of, of a device where we do some part. And it's, it's pretty common that we have some sort of uh, package where we put it, but the, the Scuba dive mask is a little bit, um, let's say, a new form of package what we use or what we would, would use. And uh, basically for us, it would be possible to start prototyping after receiving the sample mask. Yeah, I, I after seeing the Orange presentation, I think there was a little bit different understanding at our end and uh, Orange said that how this could be done. And I, I think some uh, modifications for this process should be done to get this to happen, but uh, to show some 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 things that uh, what what we could do in this case. Uh, then uh, not la the last but not least the quality management. So we have the ICO one three four eight five uh, medical certificate. So and also also sorry so also the 9001 so we have the needed documentation when we are doing contract manufacturing and then uh, yeah if you work with screen tech our, our idea is that we we do the success together with, with our customers so so customer success is our success uh, we do disruptive project which might be such that other companies Companies don't want to start to do because of the high technology risk. Uh, yeah, and we have in-house process and manufacturing for for different kind of uh, products, which were explained before. And then we can react, and we are very flexible. We are fast turnaround for development process, as shown in the in the slide number nine. Yeah, and also the hybrid uh, assembly, so co combining the surface mounted components to a flexible devices that we do basically daily on these medical projects. Yes, so 
screen to get your use for your manufacturing solutions. I don't know if there's any questions. Hi. Yes, hi, Thank you. thanks a lot, uh, Nico, for the presentation. Yeah, they, we are really bombed by questions, so it's really nice that uh, you, even if at the beginning we had some issues, now we are all very active, so I just want to remind you that we won't probably manage to answer everybody, but in the questions we can answer offline as well, and I have to tell also the speakers, colleagues that maybe didn't check that there are even suggestions. They are not only questions. So it's really nice that there are a couple of examples of masks that are already on the market that they were already suggested. One is actually from one of our partners in, in the MedFab, so it's even fantastic if we can use this. And on the other hand, uh, there is this thing that looking at your, um, at your idea for a UVC mask, uh, was coming already from the questions before, and I know what's, what is it about, because now in the social media, in Italy especially, there is this ongoing topic about a mask, of course, without UV. It's just a mask to replace a, a possible mask in, in hospitals that is actually coming from a, the equipment of a, a famous a sport equipment shop that is really looking like the one that you presented, and so could be possible to use maybe such a, a, a mask that already exists and just adapt it to, to the UVC uh, needs and then even fasten the, the process. What do you think? The question to Miko, if that you were the one presenting it first. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm not sure if I <laughs> understood the, what was the question part here. So basically, you... the, this mask, this shape of, of a snorkeling mask that you mentioned, the, it exists already uh, on the market as just snorkeling mask. So the, you said you are not using your technology to maybe build such a mask, but if this exists already, it means you could start already as a starting point from this and then implement all the devices, the LED, the power supply, and all the exchange of... of, of, uh, of um, air in this starting devices. Is it possible or do you think it's easier for you to develop from scratch, counting on the time constraints? Yeah, okay, thank you. So, yes, for sure we can use uh, something ready like the scoop from Decathlon. So that is very common that uh, we get some sort of package from or, or a pack where we need to put all the electronics inside and then we do modifications there if needed and then we pack the our stuff inside and ship it forward so, so yeah yes it's possible and then i ask a question that was also asked before just for your prototype of what you have in mind do you have a rough idea of the weight and of the volume uh, that of the of the full mask or did it, you didn't think about it yet no i have no idea how much is weight no <laughs> Okay, it's okay. We give maybe just uh, also for further discussion later uh, after also Zuren has, has talked. So now we have the, our last speaker. So Zuren has also some uh, hints and suggestions from, from his side. So if Zuren is ready, I would give you to you the floor and then you can go on with your slides. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Francesca. So um, first of all, I would also like to quickly introduce um, CSCM. CSCM is a research technology organization based in Switzerland, and uh, we are one of the partners in MedFab. So we are there as one of the research partners, as you see mentioned before. Um, actually, for CSCM, the science and technology is the tool that we are using um, to help industrial customers to implement new innovative products. And our DNA is really in the militarization, in precision mechanics, etc., low power uh, consumption, and uh, really complex mechanisms, etc. I want to briefly give a few examples uh, from the history. So even before uh, CSCM itself was founded, um, one of the predecessor organizations uh, was the one with the first quartz watch in the world. Um, also, the first microprocessor for watches in 1982 was uh, uh, just created, developed before CSCM was founded in 1984. And then we contributed to a lot of developments like uh, standalone AFM, 
uh, the first optical laser mouse from Logitech, as you might know it, uh, and many more. Also, 3G demonstrator, the first one for watch parts, for time of flight cameras, etc. And uh, also in other fields, scientific fields like um, the astronomy, in photovoltaics, um, in space missions, um, and for different electronic developments we have contributed in the in the last years. But today we want to talk about Oren's idea that I liked a lot when I saw it the first time. And um, I made some thoughts about it and I want to share this also here with you. So um, first of all, it's also the question, how do these masks that we wear, that people wear in Asia, in Europe, we see it a little bit less, but it's also coming. How do they really help for this droplet infection, what the coronavirus is? So first of all, this droplet infection is really when we are breathing, when we are coughing, when we are sneezing, uh, when we are speaking, all the time we are pushing out little droplets. Of course, that's over exaggerated here. And in these little droplets, there are the virus inside. So um, if you are an infected person, then of course, uh, the, the mask in front of your mouth is basically capturing these droplets when you're coughing, when you're sneezing. And it helps a lot that you're not infecting other people. It's also what uh, Oren was picking up with, uh, with the tube that he wants to basically sterilize also what we are breathing out, what we are sneezing out. There were, I saw that there was also a question on that. So it made sense because we protect basically our environment when we are infected. For the non-infected persons, um, it is actually the same that the capturing of the droplets, but of course there are much less droplets that are really hitting you into the face from another person. Um, but of course these viruses are stuck on the mask, mask um, and uh, they remain there. And basically, as Oren was already explaining, um, the mask gets contaminated and we might touch it with our hands and we distribute the viruses somewhere else. The next thing where it also protects, of course, for a not infected person is that if I mean, we are all washing our hands, but if we have the viruses already on our hands and uh, we put the hands into our face, we touch our nose, we touch our mouth, etc., that we are not distributing basically these viruses in our face. There, of course, the mask is also helping, but the main lim limitations with the mask that we know until now is this kind of wetting in which uh, the viruses are then nicely living. Um, so we have then a contaminated membrane in front of our face. Um, and yeah, this contamination of the mask is finally really a problem as Oren was already explaining. So I saw there, there were also some questions about the, the, the disinfection, what wavelengths to use, etc. And I think I can hear also um, give a few hints on that because I was also looking into the literature and for the SARS virus, which is, let's say, at least from the same family. And for, of course, for the COVID-19, there are no uh, studies that I'm, I'm aware about until now uh, with respect to UVC uh, uh, disinfection. But um, we can see that uh, basically People have made um, experiments. They have uh, used uh, such uh, 90 microwatts per centimeter square at 260 uh, nanometers. And actually after 16 minutes uh, of exposure, there was no living virus anymore detectable. So it was always viruses were treated and then later uh, it was uh, put into a different Petri dish and basically uh, uh, the, the researchers checked if the uh, cells get infected or not. Um, another example, this is of course a different family of viruses. It's, a, it's a, one of the flu viruses, the H1N1. Uh, there we have also indications that even uh, more 
in the deeper UVC with 220 nanometers, um, you can receive a complete disinfection, inactivation up to 95% in such aerolyzed um, H1N1 influenza viruses. Um, I think that is also quite a interesting result because here the people were really looking at an aerosol like we have it uh, then in a tube where some droplets are basically pressed in by, by the person wearing the mask. So um, I made a few thoughts also about uh, the different wavelength ranges. Um, so the UVC at the 222 nanometers, which is a quite common wavelengths, they are reported in literature that they are not causing any cancer, that they are not harmful for the skin anymore. At least these experiments were carried out on mice. Um, so um, why is that? Because the, the wavelengths becomes so small that basically this light is really not penetrating deeply into the skin. And therefore, it is more or less just the dead part of the, our skin that is uh, absorbing this light and uh, uh, the, the living cells underneath, they are not affected by that. Um, well, there is also a little drawback. Uh, some people have also mentioned that already uh, in the comments that uh, actually um, ozone is produced when you have UV radiation. Um, and this production of, U, U, uh, of ozone by UV radiation is really, really critical if we go to the 200 nanometers and below uh, in the far UV. Uh, if we talk about the UVC um, in, the, in the range of 200 to 280 nanometers, it depends where in this range we are, how much ozone is produced. But as Orland was also already explaining, um, an active carbon filter can really help here a lot that we basically de-radicalize uh, this ozone directly after producing it. Um, so in general, uh, the 222 are reported that they are germicidal and also virucidal. Um, also in this range of 240 to 280 nanometers, uh, which is what I understood uh, from Oren, is also more the range in which he's looking, like for instance, the 254. Uh, they are also nicely um, helping to sterilize the um, and, and disinfect the, the, the surfaces. But on the other hand, um, in this range, of course, we have to avoid any contact of the light uh, with the skin, which is ensured in the tube, as uh, as Oren suggested. Um, there was also the question if uh, what we know about the SARS virus, if it's actually um, somehow transferable to the COVID. Um, and I think um, we can expect that because, first of all, the families um, are quite quite similar. It's the same family. And on the other hand, I have also checked here basically this, uh, uh, this explanation, what is actually happening when the UVC light is um, hitting this strength of uh, RNA, DNA. Um, here, we can see that actually the uh, uh, the timing is is uh, uh, is hit, and and basically uh, they are uh, merged, and um, basically that is deactivating this uh, strength of um, of the of the DNA. So finally, the reproduction gets blocked. This machine gets blocked. Um, so. I, uh, we made also some design thoughts here at, uh, at CSCM about that. And um, basically here, we just uh, wanted to also put uh, an, uh, a kind of uh, focus on uh, thinking really about uh, how this virus is spreading in the droplets in a form of a aerosol. So, the viruses are not just hoovering around in the air, like pollen do, for instance. So um, to disinfect the viruses, and this is one of the, uh, 
the uh, comments that I also saw in the in, in the questions already is that uh, is it really um, sufficient time to, to basically uh, disinfect? Oren's calculations show yes, that's that's working. We had also uh, our thoughts if it's uh, if it's really enough. Maybe we, we have to calculate together again. And uh, the other thing is that, of course, then you need a really high dose in, in, in a short amount of time, which means uh, that finally um, the power consumption uh, might be something critical for a portable system. Um, so uh, a kind of alternative that we thought about and uh, what we also suggested to, uh, to Oren already is uh, if we could go for basically capturing the droplets, first of all, like it is done also on a classical mask. So by basically putting the airflow through a kind of meander system so that the, um, the droplets in the air, in the breeze, are colliding uh, with these uh, walls of the meander. And then basically uh, picking up this uh, um, this idea of uh, Oren that uh, basically you use UVC LEDs inside the system um, to kill the viruses and um, doing this, for instance, on reflective aluminum plates, nicely this light will bounce around and uh, we have longer time, the viruses can stay for some time on the surface and get disinfected. Another, of course, nice thing would be somehow if uh, just classical masks could be upgraded um, with a, a large area illumination for the disinfection. So keeping standard masks basically uh, virus free, disinfected all the time. Um, but of course, it's questionable if this is uh, actually working out and if it will be accepted by, by people. Uh, because uh, with this uh, large area, um, you have basically a kind of UV uh, mask completely in front of your face. So uh, it needs to be ensured that really there's no damage and no risk for skin cancer coming from such a mask, I think. Well, um, with these thoughts, I also just want to mention quickly, I mean, as an RTO, of course, we are not um, in, the, um, in the position to offer a manufacturing service as our partner, uh, ScreenTech from MedFab can do, but um, we have the capabilities to design and uh, prototype microstructured surfaces, for instance, to increase the scattering uh, of such plates uh, we can assemble prototypes, uh, do electrical and optical uh, testing. Um, and uh, finally, we have also the capabilities to integrate the micro optics and the printed electronics in one clean room, uh, in one clean room together also with SMD components. With this, um, I'm at the end of my presentation and I give the word back to Francesca. So yeah, thanks a lot, Søren. It was actually very cool that you addressed a lot of the questions that were still open. And so it's good that uh, everybody, so many at least had already a feedback about it. So it's also nice to see that you have another approach. So not the scuba diving and we're a bit uh, alternatives to this. Uh, do you think so? There is this question that uh, also for Nico was a bit uh, an issue. So power consumption can actually probably be an issue. Do you think this should be investigated further or maybe it's easier to find alternatives? What is a bit your, your approach on this? Well, I think um, there are uh, a few figures that we have to uh, quickly calculate through. Um, uh, there were also the discussions about uh, the breath volume, how much volume you need per minute, etc. So Oren already mentioned roughly 15 times per minute uh, we are taking a breath. Um, in total, uh, people were also mentioning that uh, uh, EPEC uh, mask is basically providing eight liters, which is nicely corresponding to the approximately half a liter of air 
um, that we are breathing uh, every time. And uh, actually, this volume, of this half a liter, this needs to be disinfected basically in these uh, roughly three, se three seconds uh, of every breast cycle. Um, and uh, for this, we have to take basically the literature values from uh, SARS and other viruses, um, what dosage is needed, um, and then see how we can basically disinfect in this amount of time with the right dosage, uh, the full volume that we want to breathe. I think this is the, the, the calculation that we still need to do thoroughly and uh, then um, we can we can design basically the system. Yeah. Okay, this is uh, really really good to know because basically, uh, as you already uh, announced, it's true in in the questions from uh, all the people who are coming. Also, this option, so um, having a, a, a an APEC model could be useful because you can have a carry on. A module that can help you in with the weight but then there are the disadvantages of course the, the, the more snorkeling mask is easier and flexible so i guess we collected a lot of ideas on what we can think about and then see what is mostly uh, the useful one to to go for and um, then i also wanted to connect it a bit to this snorkeling mask and what is going on a bit on on uh, social media what do you think Wait, I mean, yes, this is a question now for everybody uh, yes Someone was speaking? Yeah, uh, it's Oren. I did some calculation yes. uh, regarding the overall power and things like that. Uh, yes. Assuming we are going up to 80,000 microwatts per square centimeter, which is very, very high, that uh, it's definitely the amount of power that, as far as I know, will be good enough in order to disinfect the half liter that was mentioned, uh, that Soren mentioned before. Uh, assuming that, like a regular power bank, bank of the phone, you, if you know, like 25,000 uh, uh, milliwatt hour, it's good enough for a full day work. So it's a small thing, it's not, uh, not very difficult. Okay, well, this is a very, yeah. oh, this is very good news. So that's a good, a very yeah. good point to start then. So that is not an issue as uh, as we might thought. But um, yeah, I might, sure, but uh, this, uh, yeah. Okay, so this we can uh, also go deeper with the in the collaboration. You can maybe find out yeah. what is the the real demand. Mm -hmm. uh, I also wanted to ask connect to this. Uh, uh, development on the social media. What do you think that can be um, the, the if the, if three D printing can be a supporter for the development of such of such a device? This is a bit to everybody. If someone has an opinion on ah maybe this thing exactly we could three D print it and it would go fast, or if there are some disadvantages, what do you think? So I can ask Oren, because you are the idea ma master. Let's hear what you think. The main thing in getting it happen, and uh, here, like, uh, I, I appreciate uh, whatever the Miko, uh, part, uh, whatever he said, the main thing is how to bring all the forces together and start working. Once we start doing that, uh, it's very easy. The, the people are very good, uh, like once they know how to do and what to do to make it fast and make it uh, happen very fast. So uh, in this area, like Epic can assist us and you are assisting to kind of mobilize the necessary powers and they definitely be in uh, uh, like in contact with Soren and Miko and, and other people to make it happen. Technology, technology, technology wise, all the technology is readily available. We do not have to like develop uh, some out of the blue type of technologies. The technology is there. We need it to put it together. It's more like an, an engineering effort. And humankind is very good in engineering effort. 
Yes, this is definitely what we also grasped, that is definitely not needed to maybe develop further things. We are we can be really fast. Um, now the big on this. <laughs> maybe Miko can comment on this. Um, what is the, the, the timing needed for getting a, around the medical regulations that usually are addressing such medical devices? Do you think is actually something possible to be done on a short uh, time scale? What do you think? I don't have answer for this question. So as we are contract manufacturer, we usually don't deal with uh, medical certification for the products. We, of course, assist uh, our customers uh, with uh, material information and uh, different kind of information from processes. But uh, the medical certification should be asked from a company who is already doing medical devices. Sorry, I cannot answer for this. No, no, but it's already good to know what what is possible to be done in this core in this core group and what is uh, uh, needed to ask further. Because as Oren said, and I, I thank you also for this for all the words you said also during the talk. Epic is really is really excited that uh, to be able to help you with this idea and to bring all these people together. Time is also very important now because we want to be maybe effective also on a short time scale, but. Uh, we, we should not forget that uh, MedFab is also there for a, a bit longer time scale. This will be uh, what we are doing now uh, today with this mask can be done on when not so much pressure is uh, time pressure is there already next year, uh, answering the call of, of MedFab and, and applying for, for uh, getting uh, new products on, on in production. So I if there are some other questions that you want to ask, because we are a bit running out of time. So I'm a bit scrolling now on the last one. Yeah, I see that there are some suggestions about the 3D printers that could support some parts. I guess all our speakers, maybe they have no direct experience with this, but I guess if there's need of a 3D printer, we will find it easily. <laughs> At least it's a good, it's easy for me as Epic to, to suggest you something. So we are, we are, we are really well prepared on 3D printing. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, I can just wish you um, that this project will really have a further development so that you can collaborate with each other. And um, uh, as I said, we have some questions maybe open that maybe need a, a bit more of, of a detailed answer, and all the speakers will, will have access to this so we can answer afterwards. And uh, this webinar itself will also stay online for, uh, for a year, and so if you didn't have the time to see it now, well, you, this will hear it at the end, but uh, don't worry. So there is the occasion to suggest also to other friends to, to listen to this, uh, to this um, uh, webinar again and look at information and of course contact us if you want to suggest something and I don't know or maybe can say the last word about um, what is yeah, I, I, I think what you mentioned regarding like uh, to have medical uh, clearance it's a very important point I do have some experience with that uh, but with the FDA I don't know what's the counterpart in Europe and uh, in special cases, and uh, I did some work in hair removal, laser hair removal. So in special cases, and that's what I did, you can coordinate the meeting with the FDA and they will respond immediately. So if that's a special case, maybe we can cut a little bit like faster. So th that's from my experience with FDA. Okay, then let's keep this as a very positive word for the future. I also see now that David in the questions is offering also certification process advisory. So let's keep in mind that in the question and, and answers, there is not only questions, but there are really nice suggestions also of uh, that I didn't mention before. There is also someone who produces uh, LEDs in the UA range that offer to discuss with you. So I guess this is just the starting point, but there's really a lot of work in front of us. And I hope yeah. that this, uh, that this uh, nice webinar was uh, interesting for you. I, I, I believe it's really important that we keep doing such events and such collaboration. So I, I wish you all to be uh, healthy longer 
hopefully we are out soon of this uh, of this crisis and maybe Owen's mask will will help us even a bit with this so i wish you another have a nice yeah, welcome have a nice day or evening depending where you are and i hope to see you soon again in another event bye bye thank you everybody i'll be definitely in touch tomorrow morning with everybody thank you great Good <laughs> thank work. you Oh, <laughs> epic. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>